we begin with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky thanking Denmark and the Netherlands for agreeing to provide Kyiv with F-16 fighter jets. The first aircraft could be delivered this year. And the president said he's confident they'll help end the war with Russia. For its part, Moscow has warned the American-made hardware will only escalate the conflict. A warm reception for Ukraine's Volodymyr Zelensky in Copenhagen. He addressed the crowds after Denmark and the Netherlands pledged to supply F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine, something that Kiev hopes will tip the balance in the war. The main thing is what we prove with our victory, with our cooperation, what you prove supporting Ukraine. Together we prove that life is a value, that people matter, freedom matters, Europe matters. Ukraine wants the F-16 to update its aging Soviet-era air force. The F-16 entered service in the 1980s. Thousands have been built. It remains the backbone of many NATO and Allied air forces around the world. The first few aircraft should reach Ukraine by the end of this year. More will follow in 2025. Russia's ambassador to Denmark has warned that the donation of 19 F-16 aircraft to Ukraine will only lead to an escalation of the conflict. But it will be a while before Ukraine's new jets will make an impact on the battlefield. The airframes being supplied are likely to be quite old and will need extensive maintenance to remain in the air. Ukraine will also need to train its pilots and mechanics. How effective the F-16 will actually be in the end will depend on the weapons supplied with the jets. Let's explore this with Douglas Lute, who's chair of International and Defense Practices at BGR Group. He's a former lieutenant general in the U.S. Army and a former U.S. ambassador to NATO. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, welcome to the day. Um, what's your best guess about when you think these planes will be in, in the air over Ukraine? Well, uh, it depends on a number of factors. Uh, as you know, uh, this is more than just getting trained pilots and the aircraft themselves to Ukrainian airfields. Uh, there also has to be a maintenance infrastructure provided. So repair parts, special tools, and so forth. And then the munitions that the F-16s will carry also have to be provided. So there's a, there's a system here that has to all come together with the various pieces interlocked. If this is approached uh, concurrently, that is that while the pilots are training, the systems are being in place, then I would suggest by spring of next year, the Ukrainians will have an F-16 capability. If, however, there are delays, and if these if these uh, capabilities are provided sequentially, one after the other, it could be a full year before we see the effect. So either way, uh, too late to help with uh, the current Ukrainian counteroffensive. That's right. There won't be an impact this year. Right. There are also reports that, that former U.S. pilots are willing to fly these planes, and the Ukraine may be willing to let them. Is that something you think the Biden administration would let happen? Well, if American pilots, former pilots, so these are people who have been trained on the F-16 in the American Air Force and are now out of service, so they're no longer members of the U.S. Air Force, if they take personal decisions uh, to move to Ukraine and assist in the Ukrainian war effort, that's just that, a personal decision. Uh, you will not, I think, see uh, a, a support from the Biden administration or, fr frankly, from the American people to become directly involved with active duty U.S. service members. So it's interesting then to, 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 if we project forward to uh, early next year when these things are in the air and look at the situation now where we have uh, this counteroffensive moving very slowly because of the strength of Russian defences. It's hard to see what sort of difference these F-16s will make, given that, that, that Ukrainian forces are not effectively punching forward. Well, the, the F-16s, once they're fielded, 
with trained pilots and the support process that I've described will really provide two capabilities, two meaningful battlefield capabilities to Ukrainians. First of all, on the offensive side, the F-16 is a very capable strike aircraft. That is, it can provide precision strikes against Russian defensive positions. So it, in that way, augments uh, Ukrainian artillery systems. And then it also provides a defensive capability. So the cruise missiles and the drones, which are striking the interior of Ukraine now, often launch from uh, outside um, Ukraine. Those cruise missiles can be uh, attacked and de destroyed by F-16 in sort of an air-to-air -air combat role. So both an offensive and defensive capability could really prove a big difference next year. Right. And how important is it that these that uh, that these planes are coming from Europe rather than from the U.S.? Well, as your earlier report mentioned, there are thousands of F F-16s in the sort of NATO inventory to include uh, the Danes and the Dutch, who of course, uh, who of course uh, have just announced uh, they're providing some 60 uh, F-16s. But there are literally uh, thousands elsewhere across NATO. So I believe that it's possible that this first tranche of 60 from the Danes and the Dutch will serve as a prototype or a catalyst for other contributions down the road. Right. And, and can you see uh, the, the United States uh, being one of those contributors? Yes, I can. Uh, certainly there are F-16s available in the U.S. inventory. And depending on how this prototype goes with the Danes and the Dutch, uh, I can see the U.S. taking the decision to uh, to add additional F-16s as we move forward. Right. I'd like to take a look at the sort of the, the politics be behind this in the in the, the in Europe and in the U.S. Uh, is it inevitable that the longer this war goes on, then the more uncertain becomes the support that uh, Ukraine receives from its, uh, its friends and allies? Well, you know, the conventional wisdom is that, and I, I think Vladimir Putin's plan is that the U.S. will tire uh, of the war in Ukraine at the expense uh, of providing military and economic assistance to Ukraine, uh, of, the, uh, of the domestic cost of inflation caused by disruptions in the energy market and the food supply and so forth. Putin's game is the long game. He's betting that we will get tired and distracted. Uh, and I think this decision on F-16s is an important symbol, important message to Vladimir Putin that we will not tire, that we are not done uh, supporting Ukraine, and that we really have um, a lot of cards to play in the long game. Except, except, except with a U.S. presidential election just over a year away, the prospect of a potential Trump presidency must change the calculus. Well... Look, um, the American political process is in uncharted waters. I mean, this is the, the notion that the lead uh, potential Republican nominee uh, is four times indicted um, and, uh, and, and has taken the sort of political postures he has is simply unprecedented in American political history. So we in America have work to do. Uh, as um, as we move through the presidential campaign over the next 12 months. Um, and I think a great deal will rest on the choices that the American voters uh, make next year. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Douglas Lute, former uh, U.S. ambassador to NATO.